is not Sam Wrestling. Introducing your host from New York, here is Sam Roberts. I met Rob Bartlett a long time ago through radio. At least 10 years. At least 10 years ago, right? Me at the time doing Opie and Anthony, you at the time doing I Miss. But my first uh, uh, awareness <laughs> of Rob Bartlett wasn't through the radio. It was when I was a wee lad of like, I guess I was probably nine years old. Wow. Yeah, I would have been nine because okay. it was January mm -hmm. of 1993. Mm hmm. And I was getting ready to see Vince McMahon, mm -hmm. Macho Man Randy Savage, mm -hmm. and Bobby the Brain Heenan mm -hmm. tell me that this new show from the Manhattan Center was going to be uncut, uncooked, and uncensored, which you probably have PTSD hearing <laughs> hearing that phrase uttered over and over again. What, what, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> but Bobby the Brain Heenan was being uh, unceremoniously removed from the building as uh, Rob Bartlett... You entered the WWE as an unfamiliar face to the wrestling audience. It was still called the WWF at the time. That's right. Uh, as the commentator for Raw. Mm -hmm. You lasted about 13 weeks, is 13, that right? 13 weeks. 13 solid weeks. 13 solid weeks. You are ranked on lists of commentators, not... Worst commentator. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm proud to be on a list of... I'm not number one, though. I got to like do something so I can get the number one spot. Right. Yeah. I think, well, you got to make a comeback, obviously. I guess. I guess. They didn't invite me to the 25th anniversary. So. They didn't. No. They, you No raw reunions. No. no, you, no. You're kind of erased from no. the history altogether. No. So let's start at the beginning, because okay. this is a journey that has always fascinated me, and I've always gotten such a kick out of the fact that we've gotten to know each other through radio. Mm -hmm. And this was really, there was only, like for years, I would sit there going, those 13 we weeks were an anomaly. They really were. <laughs> Who is this Rob Bartlett? You know, what, what was that? <laughs> what the fuck were they thinking? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let's start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it takes place in 92, since it was so early in 93 when it begins. How do you end up? at Monday Night Raw at the very beginning of this show that has become the landmark television show for professional wrestling. It, um, I met Vince, Vince McMahon, at a charity event. It was for the Connecticut Special Olympics. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was one of those dinners, and then they would have me do my act. I'd go in and, and, and entertain. He was sitting at the table right up front, and he was wearing a three-piece corduroy suit that's very warm <laughs> oh, no, no. in peach it was a peach colored <laughs> three-piece corduroy suit okay and i did 20 minutes mm -hmm. on the suit just breaking his balls about the suit and just i'd do a bit and then i'd come back to the suit and just did so, he look like he was enjoying it it seemed to okay i mean um so the following week i guess or the following two weeks um I get a phone call from, the, I'm his secretary in the office. She said, um, Vince McMahon called. He needs to speak with you. I'm thinking, oh, what, what now? Is he pissed at the, off? At the time, by the way, you're working for Imus in the morning. Right. I mean, I'm sure that a lot of you know the show. Gigantic New York radio show, but gigantic radio show across the country, syndicated yeah. to 150 different markets. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the biggest radio show right. in the world. Yeah. 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 And um, he, I, call, I got his number and I called him and I said, he said, well, uh, I just wanted you to know that uh, I really liked what you did the other night, even though it was all at my expense. <laughs> and I'm sorry you didn't like my peach suit. <laughs> and we laughing and yucking it up. Goes, so I'm doing something new, something different. It's going to be a live show every week. And uh, I'm going to do it from New York. I'm going to do it from Manhattan. And... I think it might be interesting if we have you come in as a commentator, as a color commentator, you know, because you're a comic, you can throw in funny stuff. And, you know, I didn't really know anything about wrestling at the time. Mm -hmm. My son, who was probably eight or nine himself at the time, he was a huge wrestling fan. So I said, yeah, let's, let's try it. And now, so did you tell him 
on the phone, look, I don't know anything about wrestling, or did you just say, yeah, let's give it a whirl? Uh, yeah, I think I must have, mm -hmm. because I was concerned that that was going to be an issue. And then, <laughs> yeah, as, <laughs> as, as it would be. Exactly. Yeah. And then, so, I started rehearsing mm -hmm. up in Stanford at the facility. Right, so they bring you to their TV studio in Stanford. Right, right. They had the, their big building, and then across the other side of 95, they had in a... Um, it's so like an office park, whatever they yeah. had, like a warehouse, and that was where they did all their video stuff. And we watched matches. And who did you rehearse with? I, I rehearsed with Vince and Macho Man Randy Savage. I mean, that's amazing. It was, even I knew Macho Man, because I had taken my son to see him at Madison Square Garden. Right. Um, how, how were you received by Macho Man? I got to tell you, I have nothing but the best, fondest memories of the people who worked at that show, at that place, mm -hmm. the entire network, every single person could not have been nicer. They were all really, really, Macho Man was a sweetheart. He wanted to do whatever he could to help me. That's amazing. You know, let, it me, does... let me know if you need to, you need me to jump in here, brother, whatever you want to do. Can I lead you into something? I want to bring up something and you can jump in. I mean, he was really... Giving. Really giving. I mean, you can make fun of me, you know, as long as you make fun of Hogan too. You gotta... <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we would watch these matches, uh -huh. you know, recorded matches, and do play-by-play. -play. Right. And I could tell from the beginning this was going to be a fucking disaster. This is, <laughs> okay. gonna be, this is just a train wreck waiting uh -huh. to happen. And I could kind of tell Vince thought too, but God bless him, mm -hmm. the P.T. Barnum for our age, Vince McMahon, he wanted to do something different and he believed in it and he, he wanted to go. Wanted and I, go. I also think there's a part of Vince McMahon that is aware of something, sometimes a disaster is good. And maybe this will be right. one of those good disasters right. that... Right, I think that that it switched from him thinking it was going to be great to have a comedian to, I think my, it might be great to have a comedian who bombs every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's. But I mean, is there anything anywhere else in television where the head of, of this giant company is starting this whole new way of doing television? They're going to present their product to a theoretically an entirely new audience, right? Mm -hmm. They're trying to pick up this big mainstream audience now. They're spending. They're making this huge investment to do it live. And Vince is the, I think Vince is the only person that would sit there and go, let's just do something completely out of the box that might not work yeah. at all. Yeah. I just mean, to try. Just, Why just not? Took a chance. I mean, I, I was with the wrestling um, world right in between the two times it was the hugest. Mm -hmm. it, was, <laughs> yeah. it was right after the whole Cindy Lauper rock and wrestling, rock and wrestling thing. And just before it went back up and became what it is today. Yeah. So I was like in that little valley right in between. <laughs> right. Um, but he was also doing other things too. And we, we were, had been in discussions about, you know, he said, well, maybe you can do like a show of your own recorded stuff. Cause I was thinking maybe we'd do like a Saturday night live a half hour Saturday Night Live with the wrestlers. Right. And you do sketches. And then I thought, I'd, I wrote a pilot for uh, a sitcom mm -hmm. um, called The Turnbuckles. It was about a family of wrestlers. Mm -hmm. You know, and they, they had a, you know, they slept in a ring and you know, that kind of stuff. And so did you kind of like, when you got in there, you started doing your rehearsals, you started going, okay, this is going to be a real thing. Mm -hmm. Did part of you start to really enter into that world now? Where like you're writing stuff, like it's just, did it just I start learned, entering I, your brain? Yeah, I learned a lot of stuff, and I was I was eager to figure out a way that I could promote myself through this gig. I could raise myself to some other. So position that wrestling or, fans now want to see you do comedy, right? And, yeah, right. Yeah, and I, you know, maybe I could actually do comedy programming for them, or whatever. Yeah, and he had already hired I think Todd Pettengill to do that Saturday recap show, right? And I think it was time to get radio people i think he was exploring that idea and, and you know vince being an east coast guy i'm sure the fact that todd was on a giant show on plj right you're on a giant show on imus right i think that you know yeah i, I think that he he was look apparently if you look at who's on wwe t tv today mainly me uh-huh he's got an affinity for radio people yeah, well, there, <laughs> you you know? <laughs> like... there you go there you go um yeah, and so we did it that, that Monday night. We would do from Manhattan Center three Mondays a month, and one Monday it wasn't available, and we would do it from the hockey arena up in Poughkeepsie. 
The Mid Hudson Civic Center. The Mid Hudson Civic Center. Yes. We would, do, we would do once a month. We would be at the Mid Hudson Civic Center, which was where I had two of my favorite episodes. Well, I'll, I'll ask you for sure. Uh-huh. But so, so already I'm interested because. You never know when you go in if if Randy Savage, for example, is going to be like, "Who's this new guy?" Mm-hmm. You know, I I put my life into this business, mm-hmm. and they just hired some guy from the radio to come make fun of it. People mm-hmm. can take it the wrong way. Wrestlers are sort of protective about their space, right? And I also wonder if there wasn't. I'm surprised that even Bobby Heenan was not going like, "Hey, who's this guy coming in and taking my shtick?" Bobby Heenan again could not be nicer, more helpful. It's amazing. He was just a sweetheart of a guy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, backstage, it's just every time you spoke with him, no matter how much time had elapsed between the last time you saw him, it was like you just saw him the day before. He was always upbeat, always friendly. You know, always you know, big handshake, a hug. I mean, he was a really, really great guy. As a comedian. Mm-hmm. Do you think that Bobby Heenan could have been absolutely. in your world? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you wouldn't know it from that opening show, all the stuff they made him do. He was trying to break in. Yeah. Where he dresses up as the rabbi. Dressed, he dresses in the dress. Dressed up as a rabbi because I found out later on, uh-huh. Vince thought I was Jewish. <laughs> so, he, so he had Bobby the Brain dress up as a rabbi. Right. He's supposed to be my uncle or something like that. And then they they made him dress up in drag. He was trying to use disguises to get past Sean Mooney Sean and get Mo- get in the yeah. get in the Manhattan Center so yeah. he could be a part of the show. Yeah. Yeah. So but but he was really funny on his own. Yeah. So when you go, you've done your, you've rehearsed now. You at least know what it feels like to call matches, not mm-hmm. live, but to you, right. you've experimented with chemistry a little bit. Right. You've gotten a little bit familiar with the product, at least more so than you had started. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the feeling like when you're standing there, eight fifty eight, eight fifty nine 8 59 p.m., getting ready to go live? Mm-hmm. You're in the Manhattan Center and you're like, oh my God, we're about to do this live TV show. And I, do you still at that point go, I'm pretty sure I shouldn't be here? You know, it's like anything else, you know, like stand up comedy. It's like mm-hmm. you always have that little moment of doubt before mm-hmm. you get the first laugh, you know? But it was so exciting. Right. And, you know, they had the siren go off and the crowd was crazy over the top and could not wait for it to start. You know, it was huge. And and then the first match, I think, had Yokozuna, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken. And I know that. Yeah. Was it? I know Yoko and Coco Beware had a match on that first show. OK, so that might, must have been it. Yeah. It was, I think I think that might have been the first match. And I just remember. One of the first things I said, uh-huh. um, oh, that's one big Oriental, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> to the point now where I think if there's a clip of it anyway, they've they've actually like bleeped that. <laughs> yeah. And then there was another, I, I compared his ass to something. He's got an ass like a, whatever it was. Yeah. And, and could, you can hear this, this is like a pause. Uh-huh. And then Vince goes, Thank you, Rob. And, <laughs> and it was then I thought, oh, this is not going to go well. This is just not going to go well. That's when the, the asshole starts to pucker and you think, how, how long is this show? It's just an hour? Right, okay. right. And then you're looking down at the clock and you're like, we're three minutes in? Yeah. I would have thought 30. Right. Okay. Exactly. Here we go. Exactly. <laughs> um, so did you, did you write before the show, knowing who was going to be in there, and or was it, you I, know, I just kind of be observational and there would there would be a a, a meeting mm-hmm. uh, um, before, you know, like a production meeting with all the wrestlers and the crew and Vince. Um, they would have a grilled chicken and and steamed vegetable buffet, mm-hmm. and um, he would talk over what was going to happen, what the matches were going to be, who was going to do what, um. But there was never any direction for me. It was he just wanted me to, to just go to and be you, go and be me. And so I would try and get an idea of where things were going, so I could create lines in my head mm-hmm. that I would have. Um, but I soon discovered that because wrestling is so over the top, yes, you can't really make it funny. Because it's so over the top. I mean, it's, it's very serious. And you right. would think it would be easy to, to poke fun at it, but it's really not. It's, you nope. can't, yeah, because first of all, these guys are in unbelievable shape. The right. stamina and all that kind of stuff. But then just the idea of you have this 500-pound Samoan guy, 
you know, what are you going to do? Fat jokes. But it's just, you know, it's so. But you're doing that, and then you're like you're saying a fat joke, but in your head you're going like, this is pretty incredible what I'm seeing I know, here. exactly. Like, this is it's pretty unbelievable yeah. that he's able to move around like this. Yeah. But that's not what you're there to do. No. I mean, he's got an ass like an air- aircraft carrier. Vince. Just, <laughs> yeah, like, just no. Just, and then. Now, did they ever come to you and go like, all right, Rob, this is more of a serious moment? Because the intricacies of wrestling storytelling right. are like, there are moments where it's just kind of maybe an exhibition of a character and you can get in a joke on that character or it's an entertaining segment. There are other segments where even if it feels over the top, we need our audience to take this seriously mm-hmm. because this story drives to this match, which will drive over here. Yeah, I, I think the, there probably were, you know, he wanted to defuse a situation. If he wanted something to go a particular way, yeah. he'd definitely say something, mm-hmm. um, you know, ahead of time just so I would know to shut the hell up. <laughs> um, but then I started just doing Ico Pro. <laughs> drop-ins. <laughs> I just bring up Ico Pro and, and eat the bars on camera. That's what it degenerated into at, it, about be, the second week. Is that Was that somebody's advice or did you just think these Ico Pro commercials are so ridiculous I have to bring them up as often as possible? Exactly. Yeah. So that was <laughs> yeah. basically what I was doing. And, you gotta want it. I know. And, and, and they were awful. It was like <laughs> Turkish taffy that went bad, but I would chew on them like you know, the greatest thing in the world. And... You know, I tell you, that was one of they did the Raw 25th anniversary, which again, conspicuously, you were not there. Mm-hmm. But they did part of the show from the Manhattan Center, mm-hmm. and the part of the show they did from the Manhattan Center. As a fan, what what I freaked out for was that they had an Ica Pro flag. Oh, wow. And I was like, this is it. This, this is, is it. amazing. I'm back. I'm a kid again. That's right. Did- now, where's Bartlett? Yeah. Where's- <laughs> where's- they have the product, but where's the fat guy in the, in the tuxedo? <laughs> so, um, what, were your, what were some of your favorite moments doing that show? There were two shows that I did that were really... For me, mm-hmm. and they, they were both at at the Mid Hudson Civic Center. You like the Poughkeepsie shows? <laughs> I just the two Poughkeepsie shows stand out in my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, one was Vince and Randy mm-hmm. were getting an award because you know obviously you, you people wrestling fans know what incredible charity work that organization does. They do so much charity work. For kids, basically, kids' charities. You know, John Cena has set the record for the most make-a-wishes? Really? Yeah. yeah it doesn't surprise me. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one of the things that Vince was always, you know, requires them to do, is to do all these community service things for kids' charities. Mm-hmm. So they were getting an award. And so they weren't going to be at the show. So instead, it was Gorilla Monsoon, mm-hmm. Bobby the Brain, and me. Again, by the way... Gorilla Monsoon mm-hmm. and Bobby the Brain Heenan is, I would say, probably to me the greatest wrestling commentary duo of all time. They, they worked like Lucy and Ethel. They were they were so attuned to each other. And then you got to sit there and figure out how your chemistry fits in. So what I decided to do was, I was going to imitate Vince. I was going to pretend. I was Vince, as though Vince was really there. And you decided that on your own? I decided it on my own. <laughs> and didn't pass it by Vince. Because you were an impressionist by trade. I mean, you did impressions right. on the radio right. and stuff, so you knew how right. to do long form right. um, impressions, but you did not ask Vince. No. Um, <laughs> so I asked the makeup girl, I said, can you make me you know, look kind of like Vince? Mm-hmm. She said, yeah. So she did you know, the big lips thing and she did some shading. And I but like a... it never came up in the production meeting. You didn't let any producers know. You just. Well, I let Bobby and. and, and of course. Know, obviously, but no one else really knew. Okay. And I got a tuxedo and I <laughs> stuffed stuff in the shoulders. So I literally had the big shoulder the pads. Huge shoulder pads. <laughs> and um, I, I did Vince the whole show. <laughs> what a maneuver. Well, basically. I wasn't really speaking. I was just kind of doing like. <laughs> Monday night raw. <laughs> that's all I did all night, the whole show. And and this is this is several weeks in at this point, oh, so yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. It was towards the end. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I could see the writing on the wall. Right. So it's time to have some fun with this. I go backstage after the show. By the way, how did? 
First of all, when you tell Gorilla and Bobby that I'm going to go and do Vince the whole show, do they just go, okay, cool, or do they say, yeah, yeah. Okay. all right, but, do your thing. But Bobby said, you got balls. <laughs> you got balls, my friend, because apparently everyone was afraid to make fun of Vince. Well, he's the boss. Right, I don't know exactly. if you would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but to me, I've been so used to making fun of Imus that it was like it seemed like a natural. Right. Which is funny because Imus does have that same sort of boss energy where, where right. people are afraid of Imus. Right. People are afraid of Vince, but you will make fun of both of them. Both of them. Um, so I just, and get cursed out by both of them. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's a picture, I think, on the internet somewhere mm-hmm. of, of the three of us. Um, and so the next week, um, we're back at the Manhattan Center. Well, did anybody say anything to you after the show? The camera like, crew, all the crew went crazy. Loved it. Loved it because right. no one had ever really made fun of Vince before. Right. They were just, they were crying laughing. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the crowd thought, but they just. I remember as a kid wondering, like even having the knowledge, right? It, I mean, at that, you know, nine, 10 years old, having the knowledge of, I know Vince is running things. Like I kind mm-hmm. of get wrestling by now. I, I remember thinking, why would they have Rob Bartlett do that? Why would Vince have Rob Bartlett do that? <laughs> like, well, why would they do that? And I mean, to find out later that it's just because you thought it'd be fun. I thought it'd be fun. Is the greatest thing in the world. I mean, it was so. Because you wanted to amuse yourself. Oh, yeah. Basically, yes. that's just, I'm going to amuse myself. It was, it was clear <laughs> that what I was doing wasn't working. So I was right. kind of grasping at straws at that point. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the straws I grasped. Right. So then the following week, we're back in the Manhattan Center. Mm-hmm. We're in the production meeting. Vince does not look at me, doesn't say a word. But he hasn't called you throughout the week. No. Okay. No. So you, when he does it, when you don't talk to anybody really about it, you do it. You know, Bobby tells you, you have balls. Mm-hmm. Gorilla's like, all right, mm-hmm. do what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. Camera crew's laughing. Mm-hmm. Then you leave and go about your regular life, your other radio show. Do you think to yourself, I'm in trouble? Or, or do you think to yourself, that was Monday and I've kind of forgotten about it? No, I, I actually thought it was entertaining. I thought it was funna. You know, Vince the, liked when I made fun of his peach suit. Exactly. He's gonna, yes. the, 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 you know, the crew was laughing. Everyone, you know, Bobby was laughing. Gorilla was laughing. Everyone was laughing. So, yeah. um, so we have the production meeting mm-hmm. and Vince is not looking at me. He's not saying a word. Mm-hmm. And he just uh, make sure everyone's in there. Very solemn. Mm-hmm. Everyone came in. I mean, just everyone. Like the guy was swept up. Mm-hmm. Afterwards, I had the whole room was packed. Mm-hmm. And he turned to me and he went, "You're fired." <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Uh-huh. It's just a joke. Uh-huh. For a second, I was like, "You can't fire me because I'm going to quit." <laughs> but it was it was really funny. So he got me back, right? By not telling me that they were going to be in um, the Mid-Hudson Civic Center. And so I showed up uh-huh. at the Manhattans. <laughs> By yourself. There, well, there's a crew there. Uh-huh. But there was no audience. There right. were no fans. There was no wrestlers. It was just me and the camera crew. Right. And they went live. Uh-huh. And Vince didn't, I guess like they patched me in uh-huh. of me standing in the stands uh-huh. completely empty. <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't tell me they were going to mid Hudson so, hey, But so. he just threw to you. Yeah. <laughs> he just threw to me. And I was standing up. Um, Vince? <laughs> Where are we supposed to be at the Manhattan Center? <laughs> just, which is really, really funny. I mean, that's Vince. Could you, you have to respect the fact that he will go that far to be like, okay. We're joking around now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and oh, like, yeah. like that he will go. That he will. He will spend company money, mm-hmm. production value, mm-hmm. live television time mm-hmm. to, to get a, you back. <laughs> to do a, a remote shot of just me standing in the bleachers with nobody in them. <laughs> Look at him by himself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he, you know, they were just having a field day. So that's incredible. It was. It was pretty funny. Yeah. I say, just like, and I would think. So, do you think on some level he enjoyed that you? Not that he enjoyed the parody, but he was like, do you think he respected you for it and then wanted to hit you back? Because he could have just gotten mad and fired you. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, I got to say, mm-hmm. he really wanted to stick with it. I don't know why. I guess he thought maybe I would get better or, mm-hmm. or I'd latch on to something that would work. Right. Well, the next time we were in mean, Hudson Civic Center, I guess it was, maybe we do two, I think we might have done two in a row from there. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no. They, 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 anyway, there was another one. And I, 
So this would have been the third time they were in Poughkeepsie because the second time they were in Poughkeepsie, they didn't tell you they were in Poughkeepsie. Right. Right. So this is, this is one of the third. So I guess it was, it was one of the last shows I did. Yes. If not the, the last, but I think it was just one of the last shows. And, um, you know, production meeting, Vince goes, um, Lona Vashon of Sensational Sherry are going to, uh, come on, you're going to interview him. I said, okay, that sounds great. But uh, they're going to get into a little fight, and uh, they're going to tear your clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah, they're, they're going to tear your clothes off. I said, well, I don't have any break. No, no, just what you're wearing is fine. <laughs> so I had, like, this vest on. I had you thought you are thinking, like, I don't have any, like, you know, fake wrestling clothes that will just tear off. Right. Like, I don't have stunt clothes. Right, exactly. He's like, don't worry about it. So, okay, you know, I'm game, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I'm interviewing Sensational Sherry and Luna Vachon, I guess, comes out of the dressing room. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course, the two of them were just amazing. Mm-hmm. And they were incredible. They get into it, mm-hmm. like really get into it. I remember the brawl. And I am ostensibly trying to break them up. Right. And they both, mm-hmm. I think, if I grab a hold of my vest and my shirt, mm-hmm. And they yank it clean off. <laughs> so I'm just wearing my T-shirt underneath. And I run from where they're to, to the, back to the dressing room. Yeah. So, you know, staggering. Because, you know, because after they pulled the shirt off me, I fell over like I got hit. And, right. You, know. you got to sell. Yeah. I yeah. got to sell. So they went to commercial. Uh-huh. And I said to the makeup lady, I said, can you, can you make me look like I've kind of just had the shit beat out of me? <laughs> She goes, yeah. So she gives me a black eye. She gives me a bloody lip. She puts a bump on me. She tears the t shirt. Mm-hmm. And I came out like I was dazed after we came back from commercial and did the rest of the show <laughs> like, that. like that with the headset on with the microphone. <laughs> Just, uh, well, did you say something, Vince? <laughs> Is that the phone? <laughs> Just, and that was, uh, that was my second favorite. That's great. It was a lot of fun. That's great. So how do you find out that, uh, did you like any of the, like, as you're watching it, did you grow an affinity for any of the wrestlers or anything? I mean, that was like, Shawn Michaels was just starting to Mm -hmm. ascend and make a name for himself. The Mm -hmm. Undertaker was- Undertaker would- There at the time and- and, Who I gotta say- Yeah. Was the most Uh like his character out of the ring (laughs) than any of them. That makes me so happy. He would spend all the time before his matches Mm -hmm. in a corner of a room Mm -hmm. in a squatting position Mm -hmm. until it was time for him to wrestle. Completely, complete, you know, total costume, complete quiet. Not saying a word. So you're sitting there going like, I wonder what The Undertaker's like in real life. And you go, oh, he's he's The Undertaker. He's Undertaker. Yeah. (laughs) But, um, yeah, I, I liked all the wrestlers. Really, I mean... Did you start to enjoy the sport itself? Like, did you start to enjoy the show, or yeah, was it well, I, I, always it, from the context of just it, I enjoy it as a performer myself? Yeah, yeah. I, I, but I also was really—I mean, I really respected them mm-hmm. because of what they put their bodies through. I yeah. saw—I mean, there was one match we did at the Manhattan Center. Don't remember who it was, but it lasted for three segments. We'd go to commercial, we came back, it was still on. Was it Mister Perfect and Ric Flair? Might have been. And Vince, you know, in the breaks would say, you have no idea how hard this is. I said, no, I have. It's clear to me. He said that this is as good as it gets. These are the, these are the pros. Oh, he's, con- he's are, like, yeah. They're just telling me on the side, not, yeah. not on the air. Yeah, of course. And it was so impressive. Yeah. Ric Flair was also, on a, called me sir. I mean, was, really? Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing, these guys. It's one of the greatest of all time. It's like- Bam Bam Bigelow mm-hmm. would show up. Uh, with his wife and uh, four babies with him, <laughs> and a tattoo on his bald head. Yes. And uh, would do, how are you? Okay, you need anything? Just, they could not be nicer. Yeah. The Steiner brothers, mm-hmm. one, one of them, I forget which one it was, did give me a, a, a an Adam's apple pinch, <laughs> <laughs> which I still think I still feel. Right. Um, right. As a joke. You know, he <laughs> sat on my lap and then did that. Uh huh. I guess I said something about them the previous week or something like that, and that was their way of. That's great. Let me know. It was so. How do you find out that uh, 
the dream is over, that there is no more room I, for Rob Bartlett on Monday Night Raw, that you are now the man in drag trying to get into the building. Well, I quit. I, you did. I resigned. I I called up Kevin Dunn, mm-hmm. who was the stage manager, director. He's still there. Is he still there? I mean. Another great guy. Genius, too, by he the way. Want, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, he, he was really all for me doing that Saturday Night Live idea. Mm-hmm. You know, and I had a couple sketches where, remember there was a car commercial where they rolled a, um, a, a ball bearing mm-hmm. across the car and went down a little, it was supposed to show the lines of the car, whatever it was like that. So I did one with, with wrote it for Yokozuna and it was just going to be a ball bearing going all the way around his body and then <laughs> dropping down into the back of his little diaper there uh-huh. and he would stand up and then I would jump on his back and he would go. So it was uh-huh. like the 1993 Yokozuna. Right. <laughs> <laughs> From Honda, whatever it was. Uh, so it was stuff like that and, and Kevin really, really wanted that to happen. He was yeah. really into the idea of doing that kind of programming as well. And uh, he can he tr- tried to convince me to stay. He said, to really, man, because we want to do all this other stuff. I said, you know, Kevin, I, I've had a great time, and I could not ask for better people to work with and to be a part of, but I really don't think I'm helping the show. I, I think that what it is that I do doesn't gel um, to the point where I think that it would it would make the show better. I'm not making the show better. And if, So you got to a point where you felt like, I'm just not... This isn't for me. I'm not great at this. I'm not. Yeah. yeah. I just, I mean, I thought, I'm an idiot uh, that I was. I thought, oh, I just remembered. <laughs> Tell me. Got to go to Madison Square Garden, one of the matches. I forgot what it was. But my son and his friends, we all got to go backstage. They got to hold the belt. I mean, our little wrestlers. Well, our seats are two rows from the ceiling. <laughs> Is this why you're working there? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and because Vince says... Was this before or after the impression? After. I think it was after. Okay. All right. But go on. Vince says, um, we're going to uh, introduce you and you're going to come down into the ring and you're going to interview Giant Gonzalez. Said, okay. But I come down mm-hmm. after, you know, seeing him down there. Because so we were sitting, the idea was they were going to hit me with a spotlight and watch me do the walk of shame all the way down to the ring, which is brilliant. It's really brilliant. But I, I kind of diffuse that situation. Uh-huh. So I, um, I go into the the ring to, uh, I think it was was it Jimmy Hart who Harvey him? Whippleman, Harvey Whippleman managed yes. him. Right, 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 right. Um, and Giant Gonzalez was there. And he was a giant, mm-hmm. um, but the hair wasn't real. By the way, it was a costume. And, <laughs> I didn't even know he was wearing a costume. He didn't speak. It was just Harvey. Uh-huh. Harvey was in, and they were making fun of New York. Of course. And so I was, I was defending New York because the booze I got entering <laughs> the ring. And you're the, you're the baby face. I was the baby face. Uh, they could not <laughs> boo me. I mean, I was looking for stuff to be thrown. I mean, that's how bad it was. Now, did you enjoy that or did you not enjoy it, getting booed enjoy, like that? I enjoyed it. I, I was more concerned that my son and his friends were going to be upset by it. Right, because they're young, yeah. You know, and so the idea was, is I was going to basically m- try to be menacing to Giant Gonzalez, which is just, and he grabbed me on the shoulder and did like a Spock pinch kind of a thing. Sure. And forced me to my knees. hmm And then I escaped and I, I got out of the ring and ran back backstage. And, mm-hmm. then, uh, and then the boys came down, we just hung out down in the, in the dressing rooms, Virgil and all those guys. Virgil. Um, <laughs> hey, were you doing, were you doing, uh, you were doing it when Hogan came back or no? Yes. Yeah. I was at the show where he came back. He was promoting either Mr. Nanny or one of those movies he had done. Yeah. I think and it was were... the one with Shep Ramsey. We played the Suburban Commando. Yeah. Or whatever it was. He, he had gone off to do movies. And so he And came they were back. just getting ready for his WrestleMania return too. Right. Right. I think that, that was going to be the thing. They were going to be out in Vegas. Yes. And but that would have been right. I mean, if you're there for 13 weeks, that puts you, you'd leave right before WrestleMania. I think so. But in my head, I thought I had been there and was upset well, maybe, I didn't go. Maybe you did. January, February, March, April. Yeah, you did four months or so. Yeah. So that makes sense that you, yeah, would, be, you would be there. Yeah, towards the end would yeah. be WrestleMania. Right. Yeah. And uh, I remember not going and being upset that I wasn't going. Yeah, because that's when they brought out. Jim Ross, right. 
and they had him and Macho and Bobby do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, in hindsight, makes sense. I love you, but I sucked. I'm really glad you did not do the commentary for WrestleMania. Oh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but, I mean now although that's... it would have been fun to have you like uh, do something wacky with a camel or something, or, or you know, do some kind of skit on WrestleMania. <laughs> I mean, that's the that's the brand, man. The WrestleMania is yeah, that's the Christmas of the year. That's you know? I mean, and and WrestleMania is what's going to be forever. Right. Right. All right. Yeah, but my son, who's 34 now, mm-hmm. um, still mm-hmm. wrestling fan, and every year for WrestleMania, has a party at a at a at a bar in Brooklyn near where he and his wife live, and they they invite people. He uh, does an improv musical improv group. He invites them all, and they they watch WrestleMania. He's still yeah into it, you know. And then he drops in conversation every once in a while, you know. At least that's what I think. I'm hoping. Well, yeah. I mean, I think Rob Bartlett is the name that you can figure out, like, how big of a fan are you? Oh, I've been watching forever. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Really? <laughs> what, does Rob, what, what does the name Rob Bartlett mean to you? Yeah. Like, that's where it's like, right. if, if, if that name, if you could start talking about the Rob Bartlett era of Monday Night Raw, <laughs> we got Bartlett something to talk era. about. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't, did you know what a big deal it was that Hogan was coming back to do that WrestleMania match? Or were you kind of just kind of doing your thing? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I knew it was a huge yeah. deal. I, I knew it was a huge deal because he was the most visible guy. I mean, he was the king mm-hmm. while he was there. Um, also, another lovely guy. You what know? did your What did your kids your kid think of you on Monday Night Raw? Like, I'm assuming he would watch Raw mm-hmm. when you'd be home on Tuesday after the radio show. Mm-hmm. Would he be like over the moon, thinking it was the coolest thing ever? Would he be? Um. I think he kind of took it in stride because he'd seen me on stage. Seen you, heard you on the radio. Heard me on the radio, saw me do stand up. So he knew. This is what you do. This is what I do. Yeah. Um, I mean, he liked the idea of being able to meet the wrestlers and yeah. having a little inside, you know, glance at everything. And But, I, you know, he kind of took it in stride. And now, you know, I think he's just embarrassed. <laughs> when your name comes really, up on those really embarrassed. <laughs> worst commentator lists. That's right. I mean, ultimately, though, you're obviously glad that you did it. Was there ever any regret no. about leaving, or you knew no. that's the right call? No, I, I, it was the right call to make. Because like I said, I wasn't helping it. I wasn't making it better. What did I miss think of your wrestling stuff? He hated it. He did? He hated it. He was all excited uh-huh. for it. And then the day after the opening, um, he just went on and on about how awful I was. And he had clips. Did he do it on the air? Yeah. And he just destroyed you? Destroyed me. And, and, and he'd play the clips and just talk about how bad you were. <laughs> that's great and every week every week he'd say you gotta leave you gotta, you're awful I mean they did plug It's that's so great that's that's how you know Imus had integrity because they would plug the Imus show yeah. Yeah. but it wasn't worth the plug because no. he thought it was terrible yeah yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely I mean it was just I love that he would play clips and that probably didn't help you either you're like not only do I not think I'm helping the show but I don't need to get made fun of every Tuesday oh, morning yeah. by Ibis. <laughs> That's it's just it. awful. I mean, it was really, I mean, I kept saying, well, why, if you think it's so awful, why do you keep watching every week? Yeah. You know, so I can get some shit to fuck you over with. <laughs> That's great. Um, is there anything you would have changed about your time over those 13 weeks? Yeah. Any Or anything you wish you had tried? I mean, I wish I'd tried something that would have worked. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to say. That would be the, the thing that I would... If I had any, you know, way of going back, I mm-hmm. would try to. I probably would have done more research. Right. I, I would have familiarized myself with the product more, mm-hmm. so I would know where to go, where not to go. Did you watch it all after? No. You were like, I'm. That's out of yeah. my life. Did you have you maintained communications with anybody from WWE, um, or did you for after you left? No. Yep. No. It was no. just. 13 weeks of your life. Yeah. yeah. And then, isn't that an odd thing that for 13 weeks you were part of that traveling circus and then it was just... I, it's, I mean, it's, 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 there's got to be a book in it or something because... I mean, I yeah, I think so. It was, it was, I just don't remember a lot of it. That's the problem. I think I've blocked out so much of that <laughs> in my mind. Um, what was Yokozuna like? Didn't speak much. Yeah. Didn't speak much. Um, kept to himself mm-hmm. because you... Know, you couldn't really fit in a room with him <laughs> sure. and many other people. Sure. Um, like I said, they were all really great people. I mean... Did you have visions of, of, when you say you wanted to be at WrestleMania, did you have visions of 
expanding your role, not just in terms of doing like a sketch show, but being a WWE personality who goes to the pay per views and yeah. goes on tour and. That's what I was hoping. Yeah, you know, I, I already kind of figured out what my merchandise was going to be. Yeah, you know, I was going to because I was wearing sunglasses, I think, and so I was going to yes. make Rob sunglasses with the, my the O would be between the two, you know, stupid shit like that. Right. And what the uh, action figure is going to look like? What the action figure was going to look like? Yeah. Um, you know, I I would check out the video games to see if I was in them, which I wasn't. No, you were not. Um, <laughs> no. Um, but I got to see Jim Ross mm-hmm. not too long ago. He was doing. Um, a show with Guns, Guns Guzzleman was interviewing him, mm-hmm. and uh, he was in, and uh, I went to see him. Did he remember just, you? Yeah, yeah. What did he say? Oh, it's just good to see you. Yeah, How's it going. Yeah, you know, he was promoting a book, I think, that he'd written. Yeah. Um, but you know, great. They they brought him back. I'm I'm responsible for his resurgence, his career, you know, <laughs> the, the jump start. He can thank me. Yeah, that's one of those great things where, like, you know, if you follow someone who's beloved. It's an uphill battle. Mm-hmm. But if you follow Rob Bartlett, you'll probably do all right, right? In the commentary <laughs> booth, anyway. Because <laughs> you can't be worse. Nobody's going to sit there and be like, I miss the old guy. No, no. No one's going to say, gee, I wonder, could they get that fat guy back? Yeah. That would be great. I mean, I feel like, Rob, you are one of those people who benefits immensely from the WWE Network being a thing. People can go back. That's right. And, and somehow, you know, you would think... 13 episodes of TV, it was those first 13 weeks, it was 1993, we'll do them, if it doesn't work, nobody will ever see it again, mm-hmm. WWE mm-hmm. Network launches a few years ago, and now your 13 weeks has been immortalized, and it will be there my, forever. My son subscribed, and he called me the next day, he said, I saw you last night, I said, where? I said, on Raw. <laughs> I said, what? Oh, you know, the they have their own network now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They have all episodes. They have every episode all of Raw. Them. All of them. Mm-hmm. I said, really? Yeah. <laughs> Do they have the they have the match at Madison Square Garden that I was? <laughs> <laughs> If they asked you to come back to do something weird for like a reunion thing or anything, you would, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Like I said, I have fond memories of it. Yeah. You know, because the people were great and it was it was like being in a circus for 13 weeks. It really was. Wouldn't it be great if all these years later, almost 30 years later, you go back and Vince is like, okay, I got this idea. We're going to do the show. We're going to be in the Barclays Center. You're going to be at the Manhattan Center by yourself. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, well, I guess the more things change, right? That's right. That's right. I'd be disappointed if it didn't go that way. (laughs) Well, Rob, uh, I'm glad we finally, I've I've wanted to spend time with you and just talking about this topic because I think it's absolutely fascinating. We've got to do more. Yeah, absolutely. That's because you're, you're, you're a, Pretty well versed in this world, I have to say. I mean, I'm pretty impressed. It's been my life for a long time, and and you, I need you to keep me up to date. If any memories come flooding back, because I feel like just in this conversation, memories started to come flooding yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I may have to look, get the as memories start f- and and see some of them again. Force myself to. You know what we should do at some point? What? You come to the house. We get into my home studio. I start putting on some old episodes. And you walk me through what was going on. I did a watch along on Sean Mooney's podcast. I love it of the of the first show. I love it. Did it? Did show. stuff already start come flooding back? And just watching that first show, mm, the ones that I would allow. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that night more than you know, and the of course the the Sherry one and and Luna one and the the one where I did Vince. So those are the ones that stick out. Yeah. Um, the other ones were just. One one week was more painful than the next. It was just, <laughs> it was just awful. But you well, know. I'm glad you escaped it. But I'm also glad that it will last forever. Right. And uh, one day you will pass on, and at your funeral somebody will go. You know, he was on Monday Night Raw. <laughs> <laughs> you know, never. Every never once in a while, leave. when I do a stand-up show, mm-hmm. somebody in the audience will come up to me afterwards and say, "I used to watch you on Raw." <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I used to watch you on Raw. Yeah. I mean, look. You were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the producers, a lot of the camera people, a lot. There are a lot of people there that have been there forever. Forever. Yeah. So I would imagine the next time I see some people, if be... I go, you know, who I talk to, they <laughs> probably remember. Oh, yeah. You know, oh. there was one night where he dressed up as Vince. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank you. At some point, we'll watch some episodes. Do you want to come to see the show in the twentieth? 
The 28th? Yeah. December 28th? Yeah. In Waterbury, Connecticut? Yeah. Yeah, I do want to come see that. I'm going to get your tickets. That's incredible. Rob Bartlett's Holiday Extravaganza. Seven Angels Theater in Waterbury, Connecticut. It's going to be great. I've seen you before. You know, I love the shows that you put on. You can also follow Rob Bartlett at the Robbio on Twitter. And see, because there are going to be some people who just watch wrestling, right? Mm -hmm. That go, where'd you find Rob Bartlett? <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. He's been pretty active in show business for the entire time. <laughs> I, I get emails every once in a while from people saying, you know, they're impressed that I write back <laughs> <laughs> and, and admit freely how fucking awful I was. <laughs> well, it's great. Thank you, Rob Thank Bartlett. Thank you, Sam You're Roberts. You're the greatest. You're a doll. Give my love to Jess. I will.